show of hands, who wants to play with supercapacitors today? Hey, what's happening guys? I got a couple supercapacitors for us to play with today. This one is a uh, 500 farad at 2.8 volt. And this one is 10 farad at 2.7 volt. They will behave exactly the same. The only difference is the capacity. So we're going to start playing with this little one. And you can see I've got it set up in a breadboard here. And all these connections are in parallel. And you'll see what they're all for here in a minute. So we need to figure out how we're going to be able to charge this thing so that we can use it and play with it. Now you could just hook it up to your power supply and watch until you get close to the voltage and cut it off. And we're going to do something very similar to that. All we're going to do is add a little bit of resistance to limit the current into our equation. So to figure that out and to figure out how long it's going to take to do this, let's go over to the computer and take a look at a capacitor charge and discharge calculator. Then we'll come back over here and we'll do it. And we'll take a look at it with both a voltmeter and the oscilloscope. We're going to use a capacitor calculator to figure out exactly how long it's going to take us to charge this. So that we get a relatively good idea. And this one is from Must Calculate Electronics and I'll put a link to it down below. So if we're going to start at let's say 0.3 volts and we want to take it up to 2.5, we don't want to run all the way to 2.7 and risk damaging it. We'll charge it at 5 volts. It has 10 farads of capacity. And let's say we start with a 50 ohm 10 watt resistor and you can see it's going to take us 320 seconds to figure that out and it's going to use about 94 milliamps total peak power of the resistor will be 441 milliwatts and you can see this nice charging curve we have here well, let's find out what happens if we lower our resistance to 5 ohms. Now you can see our curve is steep a little bit, not too much. But we're, we basically decreased it by a factor of 10. We're down to 32 seconds. Peak power of the resistor is 4.4 watts and peak current of 940 milliamps. So we're almost charging that at a watt. Alright, let's uh, set everything up and take a look. Okay, so we have our setup here. We have a positive rail, ground rail. We've got everything here is in parallel. This is the positive side. This is the negative side. So we'll start by hooking up the voltmeter. down here you can see it's reading 216 millivolts now I'm also going to hook up the oscilloscope so that we can watch the charge cycle so let me get a couple pins in the board so we can do that. So there you can see we're rolling a flat line across. We're at uh, 0.5 volts per division. Now I'll bring you into this as we get in so you can see better. I just want to show you our starting point. Now I have my power supply set for 5 volts and then we're going to use this current limiting resistor. This is a uh, 
10 watt 50 ohm resistor and I will hook that up between the positive side of the capacitor and our positive voltage rail. Then we'll hook up the power. I should have hooked up the ground first, I know. But the power supply is not on. Now, when I turn on the power supply, you'll be able to see the voltage go up here. Let me move this cable out of the way so we can actually see the oscilloscope. Okay, here we go. Power's on. You can see the voltage climbing there. When we zoom into the oscilloscope, you can see our voltage is trending up ever so slowly. But that is our charge curve. We're at about a half a volt now. And I'm just going to let it roll until we get to about 2.5 volts, in which case I will shut it off. But while we're waiting for that, take a look at the scope again. You can see our curve has somewhat changed. It's become maybe a little bit steeper, and then it's kind of flattening off again. There comes a train. I hate trains. All right, we're getting close to one volt now. Take a look at our curve. Still trending upwards. One point one volt. Our power resistor is room temperature. Capacitor cold to the touch. So everything is going well. Again, we'll take a look at the oscilloscope. Here's our curve flattening out somewhat. And it should flatten out more and more as we get closer. We've got about one volt to go, and I'll bring you back when we get there. All right, there's the power supply. You can see our current, 62 milliamps. And it is dropping slightly. We were at about 73 when we started out. There's our curve, slowly climbing. And there's our voltage, 1.6. And you can see our current has dropped down to 60 milliamps. All right, we are now at two volts. There's our curve. I don't know how well you can see the power supply down there. We're at 0.52 amps. 2.2 volts. There's our curve. And we are at 49 milliamps. All right. 2.4. We're almost ready to shut her off. You can see our curve is relatively flat. Got my finger over here on the off button to shut her down when we get to 2.5 volts. Everything is still uh -oh, pretty cool to the touch. So we're not overstressing any of our components, which is what we want. There we go, 2.5 volts. I've shut off the power supply. You can see we're going down a little bit there. And there's our curve all flattened out. So what I'm gonna do now is disconnect the power supply, disconnect 
the oscilloscope and we'll disconnect this resistor. And we can now power things like for instance this red LED. If I can get it in the holes. If I put it in the right holes it'll even work better. There you go, you can see that's nice and lit. And it'll stay lit for a good long time. So then the question becomes, how do you discharge this? Well, pretty much you use the same resistor you used to charge it, but I'm going to use two 10 ohm resistors in parallel. So we got five ohms. I'm just plug that in here. And now you can see our voltage is quickly dropping. A lot of companies, what, no matter what type of resistor or capacitor they use, will put discharge resistors across them, especially in mains equipment. It keeps you from getting a nasty shock. Now, if I can plug this in quick enough. you can see our discharge curve now. There's our voltage dropping and there's our discharge curve. So we're down to about under 800 millivolts. Those resistors aren't even warm to the touch. But I hope that helped answer a couple questions about how to safely charge and discharge supercapacitors. Had we used something like this, we'd be waiting for a long time for it to charge. But it holds a great deal of power. Alright, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you for watching. And if you like playing around with stuff like this, check out Cyber City Circuits at CyberCityCircuits.com. They've got a lot of nice electrical kits, tools, and components to help you get on your way into electronics. That's it. I'm out. Peace.